sweet relations with uh, Vince Senior and Vince Junior like? Um, well, they did. They were night and day individuals. You know, uh, Vince Vince Senior. I think the only time I really talked to him is when he brought me down in the dressing room uh, in uh, February of 1981. And uh, I remember it was the Allentown Fair. Okay, even though we did the TV tapings there, they did the one show for the fair every year, pretty much. So he called me down in the dressing room. And, uh, and this, this was the only conversation I ever had with him. But I knew he was a real nice guy, a nice gentleman and everything. And he says, hey, Ron, he goes, you're a natural at this. And I said, I said, wow, you know, in my head, I'm saying, I'm a natural at this. That, what a highest compliment that you can be given by this great man, you know. He says, are you able to travel? And again, I had a quick thought. I said, I guess I am traveling. Ain't I? I don't know what he means by that, you know. And I said, yes, I am. He goes, okay. And he, he put his hand on my shoulder, gave me a little tap. And, and that was pretty much it. So I remember the next TV, a uh, girl in Monsoon says, hey, Ron, he goes, get yourself those royal blue leotards with a Tarzan strap and a hood like, like Kowalski wore, okay? So I ordered it. I don't know if I had it by the next TV. Maybe I did. Uh, he goes, okay, he goes, you're going you're gonna to work as the masked executioner. So I didn't have the proper boots. I'd just gotten these yellow patent leather boots. And if I would have wore them, that was a definite giveaway, okay? So I had to borrow somebody else's boots. And so I went in the ring there and I worked against, um, I don't remember, remember the gentleman's name, uh, but, uh, you know, I pinned him with the neck breaker and then there was another guy I got him with the neck breaker. And then, uh, in Hamburg, Pennsylvania, they put me up against Steve King. And, uh, actually this match here is not on YouTube. I found, I found this match and actually a handful of others and I'm not going to say how, but. Uh, I'm going to be putting that match out in November as the executioner against Steve King. And uh, so that started clicking. Then I started getting bookings real fast as the executioner. In 1981, I appeared in Madison Square Garden six times. That was, that was after just working three months in 1980 with this company. And here I was six times in Madison Square Garden, you know, and stepping into the garden for the first time. That was the first time I think I was a little bit nervous because it was just a, even though I think it was like 23 or 25,000 people and there, there was something about that building that it's like higher up and it looks, just looks like forever. Then there's the sound of that bell. And then Vince McMahon is commentating, sitting right there ringside, you know, on top of it. So that was the time I was nervous, you know? Uh, and, and then, and then it just all, you know, it, it just filled in. I started make, doing all these big house shows, Boston garden and, and, and Landover, Maryland and, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and all this. Then it became normal. It all became normal to me. Yeah. What about, what about Vince Jr.? Um, he, I, I really had more conversation with him the night that they let me go. Okay. Um, the, the story was that they were going to send me to California to work for Mike LaBelle. I was supposed to win a battle royal out there and then work with Andre all over the territory. And then th and this was after the fact that they let me go because Skolan told me, he goes, you were supposed to go to Japan, Mexico. Now, I don't know this, or he was maybe making me feel a little guilty about my decision, but I, I had turned it down and we were on a three day tour in New York state. And uh, I was told to give Vince a call in the afternoon. So I gave him a call. And uh, he says, Ronnie, you understand you don't want to go to California. And I said, yeah, that's right. Didn't ask me why. Nothing like that. He goes, OK, he goes, look, he goes, make tonight your last night. And I kind of expected that, you know what I mean? And I said, well, I said, Vince, thank you for giving me the opportunity. I said, I, I, I said, I hope I work well for you. And uh, and that was that was that. And of course, I had a, a huge conversation with him in uh of January of 1984, after I came back from doing the IWF tapings with Bruno and Danucci, who we did that for two years. And after it started winding down, I said, this is not going in the direction that it should start going. Okay. The house shows and the, uh, they were getting less and less because we lost the TV. We had TV for the IWF, I think for about three quarters of the first year of 1981. And then it was starting to cost a lot for the backers. And, uh, 
So the shows went on, but they were just get, starting to draw less people. I decided, you know what, I'm not going to give Vince a call. So I talked to Vince like for about 15 minutes, asking to come back to work. He goes, it's not my decision. He goes, give my father a call. He's in Florida. He gave me his number. And I called him up the next day. And he said, Ron, he goes, he goes we, got, we got a full list right now. I think we got 35 guys, but you know what? Come on back. I came back and boom. I worked full time, 84, 85, 86, 87. And then I, the, the bookings really dropped off at the beginning of 88. And then there was that NWF thing that I was asked to do. So kind of timing was right. I said, okay, I, I guess I'm done here. And I, I knew the direction that they were going. And, you know, always in the back of my mind is making a paycheck. You know what I mean? But I guess in my own, in my own mind, you know, I was old school. I, I didn't like this real flashy nonsense you know cameras are in the back of the dressing room all ha they all happen to find a situation there's there's a situation yeah. where cameras are at the right time right and i said it got too glitzy and stupid and, and and so we went right to the nwf which was back to old school again you know but that, that, those are the times i talked to both of them yeah look i was not a main eventer so i had nothing to really call these people about and discuss my career you know i they booked me i showed up and that's all I, that's that's all it was about you know making a paycheck can I ask why you didn't want to go to California and work for Michael Bell? Absolutely. Uh, I asked three people, Kowalski, I asked Bob Backlund, and I asked S.D. Jones on, on, on their advice. And Kowalski said, well, you ain't going to make no money out there. You know, okay, that's what he said. Backlund said pretty much the same thing. And S.D. said the same thing. He goes, but go anyway. He goes, if you're not making no money, give Vince a call. He'll send you, he'll send you money. And, you know, Esty was a great guy. I, you know, I had, I had no reason to say he was kidding around. I, you know, in the back of my mind, I thought maybe he was kidding around, you know what I mean? And, uh, but he was. He told me with a serious face, so I believed in him. But I, I still made that decision. I said, you know what? I made, I made almost $100,000 in 1981. <laughs> That's pretty damn good money, okay? Because I was working as the executioner and Ron Shaw at the same time and all the big house shows and everything. And I said... I don't think I can give up that money. Well, I didn't know in the back of my mind that, uh, you know, they were going to let me go because I didn't do that. I guess they were going to groom me pretty much and, uh, you know, go on from there. But so, so, you know, in my 20 years that I did this, my, you know, I would say that's the only little glitch that, that, that was in my career, but you know, it wasn't, it wasn't no more than two weeks after I was let go that I gave Walter a call. He says, come on up. He goes, cause we're doing this bedlam for Boston TV because I'm booking shows and then it was about a month after that, they merged with Bruno and Dominic and started doing the TV in Allentown. So, it, it, you know, I, I wasn't off for any long period of time. It was only a couple of weeks, you know. I, had, I guess I had to go home and say, well, is this over with now or, or do I need to try and continue on, you know, which I, which I did. And I'm glad I did.